All right, so I'm here with uh, my old buddy Lawrence. He's in the AI business. He's been in the AI, AI business for what, six years now? Yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, so we have eight questions we're going to answer about the AI business implementation. We're going to get into a bit about the technology, about the business model, learn about these. Uh, he's pretty familiar with the AI space as it is now, January 25th, 2025. So if you want to get into AI, you want to start an AI business, this is going to be a good video for you. So uh, let's start off with question number one. What does your AI-based business do? So I come from the world of consulting, specifically in, in R&D, specifically assisting companies um, build technical documents so that they can claim, for example, R&D tax credits or subsidies. So from that consulting space over the years, when you want to scale, uh, AI can be a very effective tool to scale. So what we've done is we've really built AI agents that do a lot of the interim steps of our consulting business. So what that means is that we're able now to engage in executing our mandates and using the technology uh, at, a, at, a, at a pace where we were unable to do it before. Okay, so AI is automating processes. Could you give me an idea, an example of an AI agent and what it's, it's actually doing very, very briefly? Okay, so the, the biggest application for us is we have to engage in our customers. We have to talk to them about, understand what, they're, what work they're doing so that we can capture their information, consult them, understand their, their criteria. Uh, so, you know, it takes a lot of manpower. It takes a lot of uh, scheduling, it takes a lot of meetings, it takes a lot of uh, getting people, a lot of people together. So what we've done is we built uh, AI agents that really go through the, the technical interview process to be able to uh, specifically capture a lot of the development work that the company is doing and then prepare it into, into formats and technical report formats, uh, which uh, is the, the, the format that we deliver our consulting packages in. Okay, so okay. Uh, that brings me to question number two. We've already touched on it. So th what are the advantages does AI bring to you and your clients? So I guess it's just speed. It's, it's speed of uh, execution, right? Right. So that's, uh, I would say that's one of them, uh, definitely. So for us internally, we're able to um, move faster with files. We're able to be less intrusive with our customers. So we make it easier and simpler for, the, simpler for them. We take up less of their time. But, but more importantly is that we're able to automate the process, which allows them to enhance their innovation work and R&D work without focusing on a lot of the administrative steps so that would be, for example, that brings a uh, um, brings the companies uh, at a at a, at a much uh, higher forefront of the technology platforms or technology base that they're able to bring into their products and be basically be able to develop better products faster. Okay, so you're you're not only saving time, but you're improving the quality of the uh, the final output, I guess. Right, right. But also for the customer's output. So we're, we're in the R&D consulting field. So we help companies uh, gain, for example, uh, tax credits or funding so that they could um, uh, develop their products faster and better. So the faster we're at uh, being able to provide that service and the faster that they're able to uh, be less, less, um, uh, less obstructed in the whole process, um, that allows them to just to focus more time on their R&D work themselves. You know, so that's uh, so. There's a there's there's a few big advantages in terms of the the, the value that AI brings uh, to 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 the to our our business as well as to the client's business. So, besides speeding everything up, AI is allow you to do stuff that you couldn't pos you couldn't do before. Is that is that accurate? We're we're able to touch into a much bigger knowledge basis, right? So when we when we uh, engage with our customers, we have to understand you know the background uh, sectors that they're in, the type of products and processes that they that they engage in, mm -hmm. and uh, that they develop, that they manufacture, for example. So um, so you know this is just a you know a basic application is uh, instead of just relying on on you know an engineer's uh, understanding of that specific sector, now you're able to expand the knowledge. And by doing so, we're able to, um, you know, increase our grasp of the understanding of the practices also. So there's, mu there's, multiple, uh, there's multiple components to how, the AI, how, how we use AI in our, in our practices. Okay, that's very cool. So we'll do, do a little bit of a nerd dive here. So um, 
you deliver the service via web app. Uh, what programming languages are you using to do that? So on the front end, we pretty much use uh, PHP uh, all around. And on the back end, we're going to integrate. Um, uh, we also use PHP in the back end, too. But we're going to integrate Python into a lot of the um, uh, tying in the natural language programming, for example, when we use the learning language models. So what we do is we use uh, um, a series of learning language models. So Ch ChatGPT is one of them. But some of them have their benefits and disadvantages, uh, have their, their technical knowledge bases are stronger in certain areas. So what we've done is we've used a combination of them and, uh, and really fine tune it to, to how we want to deliver uh, our service to our customers. Okay, so just to clarify for the audience, when Lawrence is not a programmer, but he's talking about using PHP in the front end, he means it's in terms of delivery of the web app, because PHP is a server-side language, of course. And, and you use Python to interact with the, uh, the LLMs, right? Right. Yeah. So it's the the uh, a combination of the of the the programming that we do, for example, is to reach out to the reach out to the customers to engage them, and uh, and ultimately to to integrate to use to trigger the 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 AI conversation or the learning language models that we're uh, tied to. So that whole process is through our own custom development. Okay. Uh, do you do you know if you use any web frameworks or is it all custom PHP on the back? Yeah, it's pretty much all custom. Yeah, so we've yeah. built it, you know, pretty much from the ground up, and it gives us the flexibility that we need to yeah. to develop in in multiple different directions. Very cool. Number five, what AI models are you using? You mentioned ChatGPT. Are you using others? Uh, well, there's uh, there's going to be Claude, which is. Uh, one which we find uh, has more of a technical repertoire than uh, than OpenAI does. Uh, OpenAI, for example, doesn't necessarily have live information when you uh, when you, for example, use it. It could be as old as six months uh, in terms of the information that they're going to extract. So, if you're developing an AI application which requires you know imminent information, then then you're going to have to uh, uh, fish out different different models. Uh, we're also exploring other ones too, like for example, Google's version. We're exploring Gemini also, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it really comes down to you know we have different, very different applications, different prompts in in different scenarios and different series, and they require each really a different level of of depth. And of course, it, there's a different cost that's involved. So we we don't want to use our 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 highest reasoning model, for example. Uh, which is which which we apply towards you know very complex uh, scenarios and, and problem solving scenarios, you know you don't want to we don't want to apply that to a, a you know just a simple perhaps conversation where you're just looking to extract for example you know just basic information like name phone number email address you know so, so, some of those some components to schedule meetings for example. So, so there's a co there's a cost benefit analysis vis a vis the model you might use. So you don't want to use the expensive ones for simple tasks and so on. And there's also specialization. <laughs> certain models are better with certain types of information than others. Is that a brief right. good summary? Yeah, yeah. And and we tend to have a top down approach. Well, we we like to start off with the the the, the highest reasoning model or the the one that has the highest capability. But also that one is also is also slower too. So yeah. in terms of the interaction, so it may be difficult to have, you know, live conversations like this uh, at this time today as we speak, but certainly it's our interest to, to enhance the, the, the capa capabilities by using the, these models that are coming up, improving just very fast. So it's like the O1, which is the highest reasoning model, but it's slow. I've used it myself versus right. 4.0. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a that's a great example. So you know we can't really use, for example, O one in a in in a conversation that you that you're having or trying to mimic a human conversation like the one we're having now, uh, because we find that the the interaction is just too is 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 perhaps just too slow at this point. Whereas uh, you know the lower like the O one like the O one model uh, has less reasoning, but is also can 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 handle uh, much fa much faster uh, server response times through the APIs that we built. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get the O3 is coming out, right? It's supposed to be super fast. That's, that's what, within the next yeah, month, yeah. 30, 20 Yeah, days? it's just, uh, it's snowballing very fast. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's gaining a lot of momentum now. Yeah, I, I, offline, you were, he was, Lawrence was mentioning, you're having, you're having a hard time keeping up. It's just moving so quick, right? 
it's just like the the new releases are you know we're, we're basing our our, our whole uh, design and, and strategy on on the models and of course we project you know how they're going to improve but you know they, they tend to surprise us every time how much better that they get when they, when they come out and that's all and that's all good because that just gives us more power in terms of uh, being able to um, uh, really uh, clone the the engineers and AI consultants that we have doing our work and being able to capture that information. Number seven, we you already touched on it. How do you see the AI landscape? It's moving super fast now. So, uh, yeah, I guess we commented on that. That was number seven. Uh, so we have to keep up. What's in, oh, here's my point. As far as development and the business point of view in terms of using AI, um, what I'm seeing based on my conversation with you and others is that a lot of people in the audience, they're worried that AI is taking away coder's job. It's just shifting it, right? Because you're going to have to become an AI expert implementer. That's like a whole new field that didn't exist prior to this. Would you agree with that? Right. Well, I mean, now, there you, you, now there's terms such as prompt engineers and being able to uh, uh, configure and to analyze. Like, because a lot of the businesses don't understand anything about how to implement it on a, on a business scale. So yeah. it's all pretty much everybody knows uh, chat GPT, what you can what you can do with it. But but when it comes to implementing the, the knowledge into companies, you know, there's there's very few that can, there's very few that can do that. Very few right now that can do that. So a huge opportunity. Yes, yeah, so, so the opportunity. So there would be an opportunity to, to offer you know, some form of, of uh, uh, more advanced use. Uh, for example, Chad GPT, not just uh, going to the window and just uh, doing what everybody does, but being able to integrate as part of the part of the, the, the client's business process and to expand its use also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's 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 a big opportunity. You see, you see these type of opportunities uh, once every ten years, and uh, if that much. Yeah. So let me just add, you know, in our field of, of consulting and R&D, for example, there's lots of form preparation. There's, there's lots of numbers that we have to capture and to collect. So, you know, historically what we do is we get them by email and then, you know, we just go through the documents manually and we look for the information, extract the data and then enter it into forms. Right. And then those forms that could be, for example, government forms or they could be internal, uh, for example, timesheet forms or the ability to capture you know, hours and understand expenses related to to activities for R&D. So in this case, uh, one of the, there's, we have a series of agents. One of them would be to analyze documents and extract the specific information and then to enter them into a specific format and then prepare everything for for the final engineering manager to review and to analyze and to make any edits or changes. So it's still really, it's still, uh, you know, ultimately a tool for us that's, uh, that, uh, that accelerates our, our, our ability to compile and execute our mandates, but it doesn't, it doesn't replace us uh, at, the, at, the, at the end. It's still, you know, reporting to a human manager. So that's a critical component, uh, you know, where we're at now. Yeah, well, 100%, you know, just so people know, uh, you employ uh, lots of developers. <laughs> so you're deep in AI and the AI, the inclusion of AI in your uh, workflows has not replaced your developers. They're actually key to the whole process. So, I mean, I'll jump in, although, although they use it also, I mean, we'll take, we'll take, for example, you know, code that was written out and uh, our developer will, will put it into GPT and he'll say, uh, and he'll say, find me the bug in this code. So it saves them a lot of time. So it's, yeah, the, the, the Developers are still key to all this. It's just that shifting. It's all. It's just changing. What it's another tool. It's a power tool. So, last question, number eight. Do you think ChatGPT is the best AI offer out there overall, or can you even say that? Um, well, uh, I would say that it's definitely got uh, the the lead. Um, I think that it depends really on the application. I think in, in, in general use, what everybody, what the general public uses it for, I think that's, that's, I think it's main strength. Uh, although it can go into, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, specific, uh, detail in specific industries and sectors also. So, you know, for what we've seen, uh, um, open AI is, uh, is probably one of the leaders uh, in terms of uh, you know many of the applications that are being built upon, but there's 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 a whole host of other ones that uh, that uh, that should be tested also because they may they may you know turn out to be better in in specific applications. So there you go. I could see uh, 
AI specialist just having this knowledge, being able to come into as a consultant or, or as you are providing a full suite of tools and within a particular sector, just knowing all these options. Okay, we're going to use GPT here, we're going to use 4, we're going to use 01 or 03, or we're going to use Gemini or Claude or, I don't know, Grok maybe. Right, yeah. So, in, and uh, every model has its, has its tiers and its own degrees of capability also. So it's not just the model, but it's, you know, with the tier of the model also. So what do you think about AI replacing jobs that people are really fearful? What are your thoughts on that? So there's a lot of momentum, a lot of talk about that happening. Uh, I, I still think the phase that we're in, and that could be, you know, it could be a long phase, is that AI won't directly replace uh, jobs, maybe low-level jobs. But I think the big uh, area is uh, uh, AI is going to replace um, uh, jobs that don't use AI. So jobs that uh, are just purely manual are at risk of being replaced by managers that use AI as tools in, within their job. And I think that's the, the, the big phase that's coming up now. Very cool. Very cool. So what's, what's the name of your business? And we'll put a link to it if you want to check out what you do uh, below the video. So we build agents. The company is chain.ai, S-H-A-I-N.ai. Very cool, man. Good talking to you. Hey, thank you, Steph. Always a pleasure to catch up. Cheers. Catch you later. Cheers.